It's my joy to be a part of this uh, theological forum. I would like to thank God and also our ministerial secretary of our North Philippine Union Conference in the person of Dr. Israel Andoy. It's my joy to share now the concept of Paul or the teachings of Paul with regards to the Holy Spirit. Issues on the Doctrine of the Holy Spirit. My title is Paul's Binitarian Expressions, a basis to disprove the personhood and deity of the Holy Spirit. Pag ginagamit ni Pablo ang mga talata na nagsasaad na ang pangalan ng Ama at ng Anak lamang ang makikita, does it disprove the personhood and deity of the Holy Spirit. There are always philosophical and biblical theological presuppositions and arguments for people who do not believe that the Holy Spirit is God and He is not a person. Critics depend that they have solid, remember this, critics depend that they have solid biblical basis, theological basis, interpretations and arguments against the Trinitarian view of God, particularly the deity, attributes, and personality of the Holy Spirit. This paper tried to seek a balance in more comprehensive perspective analysis on how these binitarian expressions were used by Paul. It seems the passages clearly tells us that the Holy Spirit is not a person. It connotes vanity or tonity. It discovered, presented the other expressions used by Paul to prove that because Paul did not mention all the names of three persons in a particular passage, that the one not being mentioned is not a person. It strongly presented the personhood and the deity of the Holy Spirit this paper depends more heavily on the observation and analysis of the passages in the Paul's writings. There are two usual ways that biblical writers of the New Testament portray persons of the triune God. First, the most obvious is so-called binity or newly coined word, tonity, meaning Two persons in reference to the God that appear in the text. There are only two names of the persons, names of persons that appear in a particular passage. Usually it contains the combination of the name, title, description, designation, such as God, Christ, Father and Son, Father of God, God and Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. In other similar expressions, either in the inverse or reverse order. Second, the Trinity or triad formula, meaning three persons are mentioned in reference to the triunity of God in certain texts consisting the word or words like Father, Son, and Spirit or alternately God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit or it reverse order. However, there are not unusual usage of expression, yet distinct. The third, the praise has this sequence. Jesus in the Spirit, the Lord Jesus or Christ. The fourth contains the three praise, God and Spirit, Father and Spirit, respectively. There are four ways of how God revealed to the biblical writers the one triunity of God. As I said, there are passages in the epistles of Paul that have been cited and considered as biblical basis of denying the deity, divine attributes, and personhood of the Holy Spirit. In short, Paul promotes vanity or tonity to them that take these binitarian passages. Like, for example, to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, Grace to you in peace from our God and Father, Lord Jesus Christ. So in the, benedict, in the greetings of Paul, to all who are in Rome, 
Beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from our Father, God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Only the Father and the Son were mentioned. So that is a totalitarian in concept, according to them. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies of God and of comfort, of all comfort. 2 Corinthians 1, 2, and 3. It seems Paul was promoting vanity or tonity. Again, this paper tried to seek a balance in more comprehensive perspective analysis on how the seemingly binitarian passages will be properly dealt with. We have these binitarian expressions, father and son, Romans 1.7 and 2 Corinthians 1.3. But we have also these passages that talks only, that presents only father and the Holy Spirit. If Romans 1.7 and 2 Corinthians 1.2.3 presents Father and Son only, uh, we have this 2 Corinthians 6.19, the same book written by Paul, and Romans 5.5, 5, mentioning only the Father and the Holy Spirit without mentioning Christ. That is mean that Christ is not a person. Father and the Holy Spirit, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And who is in you whom you have from God and you are not your own? For you were both at a price therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit which are God's. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 Father and Son now, Father and the Holy Spirit, as Banitarian passage. We have also another Banitarian expression used by Paul, which mentions only Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit without mentioning the Father. From whom the Lord, the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Kaya dalawa lamang ang persona dito, ang si Jesus Christ at ang Holy Spirit without mentioning the Father. That is, does it mean that the Father is not a person? Because Paul did not mention the name of the Father here in this passage. Another, Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Again, Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit were only the names mentioned without mentioning the name of the Father. But we have also Trinitarian perspective by Paul. I hope that uh, these Trinitarian friends of ours will consider these passages. He will not only look on the Binitarian passage, which talk about presenting the Father and the Son as persons of the Godhead. Trinitarian perspective, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you. Amen. So the three names were now mentioned. The Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the Holy Spirit. Another Trinitarian perspective, Ephesians 4, 4 to 6, there is one body in one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and you all. So, Paul now is presenting his uh, concept about uh, the presence of the three persons of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were mentioned in 2 Corinthians 13, 14 and Ephesians 4, 4 to 6. There are passages in the epistles of Paul that it seems Paul was promoting vanity or trinity, but carefully looking on the entirety of the epistles, Paul was Trinitarian in perspective. There are a lot of passages in his epistles that he mentioned the names of the three persons in the Godhead. Then, to conclude then that the Holy Spirit is not a person is making a conclusion 
that is very biased and very selective on the passages or in the writings of Paul. We have also, I notice, vanitarian expression in the writings of Ellen G. White, similar to the writings of Paul. Vanitarian expression by G. White, Father and the Son. I will not dwell so much on this because someone will write, on, will present on this. Father and the Son, I saw throne and on, the, on it sat the Father and the Son. I gazed on Jesus' countenance and admired his lovely person. The Father's person I could not behold for a cloud of glorious light covered him. I asked Jesus if his father had a form like himself. He said he had, but I could not behold it. For he said, if you should once behold the glory of his person, you cease to exist. The writings, page 55. So here, Ellen G. White, to others, to those who believe, or who teaches binitarian, vanity or uh, tonity, will use this statement coming from Ellen G. White that there are only two names mentioned by Ellen G. White in this particular aspect, the Father and the Son only. There are three living persons of the heavenly triad. Now, we have the Trinitarian perspective by E. G. White. There are three living persons of the heavenly triad in the name of these three great powers, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those who receive Christ by living faith are baptized. Another, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Another, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Powers infinite and omniscient receive those who truly enter into covenant relation with God. The three distinct agencies, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We have more. The Holy Spirit is the comforter in Christ's name. He personifies Christ. Yet, is a distinct personality. I would like to underscore this. Ellen G. White, like Paul, emphasized that the Holy Spirit is a person. This Ellen G. White says, yet is a distinct personality. I would like to move in the uh, comments of the scholars like Crudence. Commenting on 2 Corinthians 13.14, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Crodems made this uh, exposition. And I would like to underscore what he said. The fact that the Holy Spirit was mentioned along with the Father and the Son, it connotes equality. It connotes equality. Uh, passages like Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Boy, and make uh, disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit, were mentioned along with the Father and the Son. And, and these uh, greetings and or uh, the benediction formula, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So the Holy Spirit commune, the Holy Spirit dwells with us. So the fact that the Holy Spirit was mentioned along with the Father and the Son, it connotes equality. Therefore, to Paul, uh, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is a person equal with the other two, the Father and the Son. Within comments, the Holy Spirit searches all things. Yes, the, thing, the deep things of God and no one knows the things of God except the Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's the one who searches all things. It shows omnipresent, uh, omniscient, omnipotence. The Holy Spirit searches all things. He can search all things. He is the things of God. The very deep things of God. And no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. B very uh, empathic. Paul was very empathic when he said, No one knows the things of God except, 
accept the Spirit of God. He is uh, teaching, he is presenting that the Holy Spirit is omniscient. Because he knows the very deep things of God. No one knows the, th the deep things of God except the Spirit of God. You know, in uh, 2 Corinthians, he searches all things. Searches all things. He is equal in uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. And 1 Corinthians 2, 10. He searches all things. The deep things of God. And no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Only who was in the mind of God can fully know the things of God. Because the Holy Spirit has in the mind of God, He can only be the one who fully know the things of God. Who He is God Himself. Who is God Himself can fully reveal who is God. Commenting on Holy Spirit as omniscient, 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 16, describe the difference between human wisdom and God's wisdom. Human wisdom is limited to what can be observed and worked out with human reasons. But the statement, the Spirit searches all things, implies the Spirit searches into has a perfect knowledge of everything. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. He has the perfect knowledge of everything. Again, there are a lot of passages in epistles that they mention the names of three persons of the Godhead to conclude that the Holy Spirit is not a person. Is making conclusion that is biased and selective. I would like to say that our friends who teaches binitarian teachings or trinitarian teachings just select passages in the scripture, especially in the writings of Paul, which sometimes there are passages that he only mentioned about Father and Son without mentioning the Holy Spirit. But there are also passages that he mentioned about the Father and the Spirit without mentioning the Son. It does not mean that the Son is not a person when that particular passage written by Paul did not mention the name the Son and he only mentioned the Father and the Spirit. Likewise, when there are passages that Paul used like Jesus Christ and the Spirit without mentioning the Father, it doesn't mean that the Father is no longer a person, according to Paul. Let us look on the entirety of his writing, of his epistles. And there are a lot of passages in his epistles that he mentioned the names of the three persons of the Godhead and teaches that the Holy Spirit is a person, a divine person. So again, to end, to conclude that the Holy Spirit is not a person is making a conclusion that is biased and very selective in the writings of Paul. I hope that this will contribute an understanding on how Paul presents the person of the Holy Spirit and the deity of the Holy Spirit.